only a few people know so far, and this is the secret. I am the host of a new podcast, which will tell stories of true crime, weird disappearances, strange mysteries, wild adventures, spooky things, funny things, and also stories that listeners ask me to tell. But these stories will be spoken entirely in whisper, and every story will be 100% true. In fact, the podcast is called Whispered True Stories. <laughs> For many people, hearing a story that is told in whisper makes it much more interesting to hear, and listening to a whispered mystery or a true crime story at night has often been found to be relaxing or even comforting for people who have difficulty in falling asleep. Now, I will mention one last thing. Over the past several months, as the co-host of a podcast, I have received many comments from listeners about my voice and how soothing it is when they listen to me tell a story. So, I'm hopeful that the combination of whisper and my voice will give you as much pleasure as all of those very sweet comments have given to me. Be sure to remember the name of the show, Whispered True stories. Look for it on iTunes and hopefully on all of your favorite apps for podcasts. Thank you for listening. Mommy, you're so good at content that is not suitable for kids like me. What is that? Is that a monkey raising its hand? Oh, it's a teddy bear with a pencil. No, it's like a little space guy with a pencil. He has one eye. He's a cyclops in a scuba suit. That is disturbing. Welcome to Crime Crazy, the weekly true crime podcast with Erin Plyme and Diana Seacon, where we prove that we know nothing about our legal system, but we're still crazy for a good true crime story. Also, it's Christmas. It's not even Thanksgiving. It's totally Christmas. I'm wearing gold antlers. We live in a society. There are rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we, we should not break them <laughs> and go to jail, but it's totally Christmas. So, Diana, mm -hmm. happy it's time to start decorating for Christmas time. Not until Friday. So, did you learn anything this week? I did. I learned something cool. Although, I'm starting to feel like uh, all, all the things I talk about are llamas or voting. Yeah. So, we're yeah. going to go back to voting for this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Promise, I'm going to get off voting. Never. I mean, for a week or two. It's Christmas. Okay. Voting. Voting. So, despite what I have always believed and always been told, felons can totally vote. Where? Everywhere. <laughs> what? No. Yeah. So, this month's election saw Florida to be the latest state to allow people with felony convictions who have completed their sentences to vote. Right. This makes a total of 48 states that allow this, with only Kentucky and Iowa not allowing that. So, when Florida passed this new amendment, this yeah. past election... They enfranchised about one and a half million people. Right. Yeah. So, but... Ooh, other fun fact. Okay. Which is the largest number of people enfranchised at the same time since the 19th Amendment was passed. Wow. Because a quarter of convicted felons live in Florida? I think that sounds about right. I, yeah. I'm just going to go with that. I, I guess so. Good. Yep. Um, so they can, their voting rights are restored after they're done with parole or probation, as long as the crime wasn't murder or a felony sexual offense. Wow. And in Maine and Vermont, you can vote while you're serving your sentence. Huh. So, but Tanya tells me all the time that she can never vote and that none of them can ever vote. Nope. They all 100% believe that's true. 
I 100% believed that was true, too. That's what you're always told. You can't vote again if you're a felon. Right. You can vote almost everywhere as long as you don't move to Vermont or Iowa. Uh, Kentucky or Iowa. Sorry. Vermont something else. Right. Vermont, no, you Vermont, can vote all the time. Vermont is good. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. That one is one of those things that's like, really? I mean, really? That's such a terrible thing to take away from people for not a good reason. I realize they've made a mistake. Maybe many, many mistakes. Right. But they don't get to influence anything. Right. Well, and, you know, I get to wonder, too, because I'm a paranoid asshole. You know, is this a rumor that was spread? Because it was kind of not really ever true. Mm -hmm. Uh, Was this something that was spread to specifically disenfranchise? Because the other thing, too, is that these... Well, I guess it was true. Um, But it hasn't been for a long time. The laws weren't specifically aimed at African Americans. Right. But they disproportionately affected. Right. Right. And they were passed around the same time that a lot of the other disenfranchising laws were passed. Yeah. So how much of it was, we don't want people that have made a mistake to vote, and how much of it was, we don't want black people to vote. Right. Or poor people, or people with mental illness. Right. Like, let's just wipe that whole group out. Yep, exactly. So... Interesting. Wow, yeah. I had no idea. I had no that idea either. That is going to make my fact sound so silly. I mean, it was going to sound silly anyway. Is it about llamas? It is not. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. What did you learn this week? I just have to put a disclaimer out there. So I want my disclaimer to be, I don't actually believe any of this, but sometimes I wonder if maybe I do. Mm. So I learned some stuff about Harry Potter. What? Wait, what? Yeah. There was something you didn't know? Oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) The thing that I actually learned pertains to Oliver. Oliver the dog? Oliver the dog. Okay. Who is not a dog. So I don't know if I've mentioned this, but Oliver's an animagus. Mm -hmm. I have always believed Oliver was an animagus. He's just too human. Like, Mm -hmm. he's a pervy old man. 100%. (laughs) Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) But it turns out that I think... Because we've had conversations where I've asked him if he would turn back into a human to save me if my life was in danger. And he mm-hmm. was like, no. Yeah. So, um, wow, I'm going to sound batshit on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, anyway, turns out I think he's a maledictus, which is somebody with a blood curse who transforms into an animal, usually while they're asleep. And then eventually it becomes permanent. They can't control it and change back into a human anymore. Mm. And so the idea is that somebody is cursed with this curse. But then if it's a female, it can be passed down to daughters. So it could affect later generations. But then you would have to breed as the animal. No, because it's... It's eventually you turn into it, but like you can have an, you can be an adult and have a family and not even know this is affecting you. Um, Or you could just be a carrier. Yeah. So the reason I learned that is because it's in the new Harry Potter movie that we went and saw. I say it's a Harry Potter movie. It's kind of a Harry Potter movie. It has the same characters. Um, and, and so that was a plot point, a twist that was spoiled like a month ago. Uh, (laughs) So, but I've decided that is actually what Oliver is, and that's why he won't turn back into a human. And he was very excited when I came home and used that word yesterday. Oh. He was like, "Yes, mom, that's what I've been trying to tell you." And I'm getting some sweet. He, he has been love. so snuggly today. Yes. Are you cold? You got no more fur. Yeah, it's all gone. I also learned, but again, this is not a real thing. Um, my neighbors are apparently raking their yard into cardboard boxes and then carrying the cardboard boxes to my backyard and <laughs> dumping <gasps> them in my backyard. No. I let the dogs out while I was on a call earlier today. I'm sorry, who let the dogs out? I did. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and they went crazy. And so I was like, I'm going to have to get up and go get them. And so I walk out and I'm looking because Oliver is taking a walk as usual. And... Um, And there's my neighbor with a cardboard box, like, stooped over. So the way our backyard works is there's, like, a brambly section. Yeah. They're apparently just making a leaf pile in that brambly section of my backyard. And he's, like, looking at me, holding the box. And eventually I was like, okay, I'm just going to lock the door and go back. Oh, my God. Who did that? 
I'm here by myself. <laughs> so they spent the entire day blowing leaves into a pile, raking the piles into cardboard boxes, and dumping them in my backyard. And that part of your backyard isn't fenced. No. They could just rake them over there. Well, yeah, but they were carrying them, like, from the street all the way back to the oh backyard. Oh, my God. So their yard is leaf-free. I will have plenty of chipmunks and moths and all of those creatures that need the leaves. Jeff. Yes. So leave the leaves alone. They're fine. They are also not responsible for the manure smell that is all over our lovely city at the moment. Oh, no. That's river stench. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and, like, um, manured farms that thawed when it got warm. The other oh, day. yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Leave the leaves alone. I, uh, we have had an ongoing debate in the Seacon household about whether or not you rake leaves. The answer is no. No. But to Jeff, it's yes. And so I've been presenting all of the arguments, which start with, it's just a stupid waste of time. Right. It is how nature works. Right. It's stupid waste of time and I'm not doing it. Right. Also, other critters and shit need it. Right. Uh, so he also did some research and he came back with snow mold. Snow mold? Snow mold. What What is snow mold? I think it might be a lie. What's so apparently, if you have leaves on the grass and it snows, uh-huh. they can create a mold. Uh, wouldn't, the, wouldn't it die because it's cold? I don't know. Okay. Also, the world is full of fucking mold. Yeah, actually, we, we need it. Right. And it's not that it definitively will. It's that it could. Yeah. Which I don't care. Right. <laughs> when we used to live in the house that we lived in when I was like most of my childhood and like teenage years, it was in the woods. So there were leaves mm-hmm. um, and we would rake them up and then, you know, you just, you're supposed to jump in the leaf piles. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, not in Virginia. That's dangerous shit to do because they're full of giant spiders, like full of giant spiders, wolf spiders, like wolf spiders and um and so you don't like i never wanted to jump in the leaf pile so that has been the only reason i've been tempted to rake here is because i could jump in a leaf pile why did you live in that place i well i'm just so encouraged by this horrified look on your face because that tells me that's not how it works here no no we don't have seven feet snakes hanging in our fucking garages <laughs> we don't have leaf piles full of goddamn giant spite no okay. <laughs> no because that is definitely definitely how that works so Aaron, yes do you have a story for me i have two oh! which is why i'm gonna go first again yes um so here was my struggle as i found two stories <laughs> mein kampf Right. <laughs> uh, neither of them were very detailed. Like, they're just sort of lacking on detail. Good stories, not a lot of detail, so very short. Also, both of them need to be told in this episode specifically. Okay. Because one of them kind of pertains to my story last week. Mm-hmm. And the other one is Thanksgiving themed. Ooh. So we're going to start with that one. Okay. So I am going to tell you a story about a woman named Jacqueline Blake. Okay. Not Jacqueline. Not oh, Jacqueline. like there's no vowel in the middle there? It's Jacqueline. It is J-A-C-K dash L-Y-N. Jacqueline. Oh, man. I bet that caused no fucking end of problems at work. Right? <laughs> in school. Everything. And everywhere. I just hope that throughout her life, she went by Jackie and spelled it J-A-C-Q-U-I. Oh, 100%. Yep. Right? <laughs> like, I'm going to go by this nickname that's actually more of a name. Um, anyway, Jacqueline Blake had had some issues. And I thought that I could find out more about her past and her history and where all of this started because this is going to like get serious fast. Okay. Uh, But I couldn't, I didn't find anything about her except this insane incident. Wow. So she was 47 years old, right? Like a fucking adult. Mm. Uh, She lived, right. (laughs) Well, lived in Pennsylvania. I have no idea where she is now. Um, And in 2014 on Thanksgiving she had a really big fight with her boyfriend. Mm. So, Holidays. yes, very much so. So they lived together. Um, 
I don't know if she had cooked or he had cooked or what the fight was about or if this was normal behavior or whatever else. But it was so upsetting and it was such a huge fight that she got really drunk and then went to go sleep it off. Okay. So everything is prepared. She's like, I'm going to go take a nap and cool off and, you know, not be so drunk. And then we can eat dinner. But boyfriend got a little peckish and decided he would start eating Thanksgiving dinner before she woke up. Oh, maybe he was no. mad. Maybe it was revenge. Maybe he thought she was out for the night. Uh, maybe he was the one that did all the cooking. Whatever the case was, he sat down and started eating the turkey without her. And she woke up and found that he was eating the turkey. Um, so and she fucked him up, right? She chased him around <laughs> the dining room, wielding a knife. That's right. <laughs> she stabbed at him multiple times before finally connecting with his chest. So she just like was stabbing at him. Yes. <laughs> um, then once she had stabbed him in the chest, she like, wasn't shocking enough or whatever. She chucked the knife at him and cut oh. right under his left eye. Like almost got him in the eye. So she's a better knife thrower than she is a stabber. Stabber, yes. <laughs> yes. 100% connection if you throw it. <laughs> so then she left him and she was going to leave. So she like cleaned up or whatever and, and was leaving and got to the door. He had already called the police. And so they basically met. Like she opened the door and there were the cops. Mm -hmm. And she didn't try to run. She didn't do anything. She was like, yeah, I stabbed him. And <laughs> so. <laughs> Motherfucker ate my turkey. That's right. He started Thanksgiving without me. I was asleep. I stabbed him. Ooh, yeah. So the officers found the boyfriend inside. He had a towel that he had gotten. And he was pressing his chest wound as a good, like, first aid certified person would. Did she yell at him for using a good towel, too? I <laughs> <laughs> that, that was unclear. Okay. He went to the hospital. None of his injuries were life-threatening. He was fine. But she was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, simple assault, reckless endangerment, and making terroristic threats. So what was she yelling at him? <laughs> I don't know. A couple of articles I read cited that, and they were like, we want to know, but that no one knew. Oh my so gosh. I'm not sure what these terroristic threats were. But apparently you don't mess with this woman's... No like mashed potatoes and stuffing and green bean casserole and turkey and ham and cranberries and rolls and pecan pie, orange and pumpkin delight. pie, whatever the hell orange delight is. Oh, it's a it's a family staple. Corn salad. Wow, so. that's amazing. Yeah, I feel like that. Like you work hard all day. Mm hmm. What was it? There was a time. It, it was a specific time. I know it's happened more than once, but like I, I made something for dinner and I think it involved the crock pot because it wasn't there when it finished. Right. I was like out for some reason. I went shopping or whatever. And so I was going to get home. By the time I got home, they had eaten like almost all of it and there were a ton of dirty dishes everywhere, but like mm -mm. no good food left for me mm -mm. and I cooked it. So I, I get it. And I love my family. I'm assuming... <laughs> That she was a little less, you know, certain about that fact. Or was she just more drunk than you were at the time? I don't know. When I get drunk, I think I get nicer instead of meaner. So I used to get nicer, but apparently I've taken a turn. <laughs> I just get like cuddly. Yeah. Like, I just want to get close to everybody. All right. So do you have a story for me? I do. Is it about turkey? It's about family. Okay. All right. I don't really like turkey. I like it once. All right. So <gasps> tell me a story about family. Okay. So I went vintage again. Awesome. At the entrance of the Twin Foxes Estate, which is a housing development in Woolmer Green, Hertfordshire, England. You went vintage and foreign. Vintage and foreign. There are two pillars at the entrance of the housing development with cool. busts on top of them. Okay. And the two men pictured were twins. They're identical twins. <laughs> so basically, they just made one and copied it. That's exactly what they did. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you know, if we're going to put brothers up here, they should be identical twins. Well, it was these particular identical twins. Oh, okay. So the two men on the pillars are Ebenezer Albert Fox and Albert Ebenezer Fox. 
no. Hundred <laughs> All the time, I'm like an unnamed so and so, and every single time you say, "Was it because he didn't have a name? His parents just couldn't be bothered." <laughs> In that case, the parents totally just couldn't be bothered. Oh no, there are specific reasons. We'll get there. Laziness. So the Fox twins weren't honored in this fashion because they were prominent citizens or scholars or or men of note. They were notorious poachers. What? Yep. (laughs) And the things that they did to try to get away with their many, many, many crimes uh, helped solidify one of the forensic facts that we take for granted today. Okay. All right. So Ebenezer and Albert were born in 1857 in Simmons Green, Stevenage. Okay. They were named after the Ebenezer Chapel on Albert Street. Wow. Because their father was both a devout supporter and a lay preacher of that church. Uh, Their father was named Henry. I feel like that's actually more lazy than what I was thinking. Right. Like, not only did you not come up with two separate names, but you just named it after where he worked. Well, he didn't work there. He was just hung out there. Wow. Okay. Um, he was actually kind of a farmer. He had a small kind holding, of. which is a farm of about 10 acres. Okay. So. A little you know, farm. Yeah. And their mother, Charlotte, was a straw pleater. Like making baskets and rugs and stuff? Yes. I had to look that up. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, she just braided straw. What do you do with that? Why oh, yeah. Like hats that? and shit. <laughs> <laughs> So the twins were so identical that even their parents couldn't really tell them apart. Which didn't matter because they gave them the same name. Right. They might as well it be the same matter. <laughs> So Charlotte would tie red and blue ribbons to them or make them sit in assigned chairs. <laughs> However, at least once when they were really little, uh, their father may or may not have mixed up the ribbons. So they never really knew who was who, who. Was who anyway. When they were older, they liked to switch their ribbons or their chairs to get out of trouble with their mom. Right. And by their adult years, there was only one reliable way to tell them apart. Ebenezer had the marks of five cuts on his left wrist, and Albert had four on his right wrist. Okay. (laughs) That was it. That was the only way you could tell them apart. Wow. So, despite their fairly respectable family background, they embarked on a life of crime. Of course. Their crime of choice was poaching. And by the time they were 11, they were setting traps and snares for animals. Mm. At 13, they'd acquired their first gun by stealing it. Of course. Yep. They were actually charged for that one, but the judge threw it out because he didn't think that such young boys could do such a thing. Oh, that judge is so dumb. Right. But then they were caught again the next month. (laughs) And they were fined 10 shillings. Okay. And this was just the beginning. Together, the twin foxes, as they were known, (laughs) amassed about 200 convictions between them. Holy smokes. 120 for Albert and 80 for Ebenezer. Albert is not as fast of a runner as Ebenezer. (laughs) Well, we don't know that. So most of this was little shit. Uh, Little assault. A lot of poaching. They would take pheasants. They would p- do night poaching, which is apparently worse than day poaching. Okay. They'd steal pigeons. There uh, there were a couple of assaults. Assault on the gamekeeper. Assault on police. Wait, they stole pigeons. They stole pigeons. What the fuck is it with people and stealing pigeons? What's up with pigeons? N- nobody it's knows. It's just a pigeon, if, guys. If you know what is up with pigeons, email us at right. crazypodcast at gmail.com. Why pigeons? They stole potatoes. They stole a pair of trousers. On and on and on and on. Despite their... Just a pair of trousers. Just one. Just the one pair they of trousers. They were going to share it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably. So, considering the fact that they they were frequent reoffenders, they never received a sentence of more than 12 months with hard labor. Never. For nothing. Why? Why would... Why? Well, they were weirdly considerate about how they committed their crimes, and the community mm. kind of tolerated some of their behavior. Gotcha. They were good resources for the community. They knew where to find you a good hunting dog. They were good at hunting down animals that were troubles, so like foxes that were causing trouble. Like, they'd right. come out and hunt them for you. Yeah. And they also uh, committed their crimes over a large area because they didn't want to become too troublesome to any particular landowner. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they, they were weirdly <laughs> considerate about this. And, like, kind of, I don't want to say the toast of the town, but, like, everybody knew them and was yeah. kind of like, oh, 
It's Those fox them. twins. Yeah. Right. So they learned pretty quickly that they should never go poaching together. If one of them was caught, it was really easy to confuse the police about who they had. Yeah. They'd provide alibis for each other. And even in court, they'd just call each other by the wrong names until everybody just fucking gave up. Right. <laughs> you know, they just they right. got disgusted. It was over. And sometimes the wrong brother was convicted, but they figured, eh, it all comes out in the wash because he'll get convicted (laughs) wrongly the next time. (laughs) I was telling Jeff about this while we were having lunch today, and I said, I feel like they felt about convictions like I feel about traffic tickets. I don't have nearly as many as I should, so every time I get one, I make no fuss. I just fucking pay it. Well, right. Even if that <laughs> particular time you weren't really Even doing if I it. didn't deserve it that time, I'm still going to pay it because I definitely have deserved it other times. Right. Yes. <laughs> so I wonder if it would have been a good strategy to choose one brother who was always in trouble, so he has a really shitty record, and then the other brother is the angel, so you could always get off clear. Yeah, maybe. Although I don't know what that would have benefited from. I don't know. It just seems like that's how they should have played it. Yeah, that would have been fun. Pile up all the negatives against one person. Right. (laughs) And apparently also once they made it to court, it was a a pretty good time. Oh, yeah, I bet. (laughs) Ebenezer was a pretty quiet guy, but Albert was, uh, quote, an outrageous comic. Nice. And they'd make up crazy excuses for the court. One time Ebenezer said that he'd been out in the woods that night to practice his hymn singing. Oh. And reached into his pocket and pulled out a hymnal along with a bunch of pheasant feathers. Whoops. <laughs> Every once in a while, they'd go straight. They'd work as builders. Mm-hmm. But then jobs would dry up and they'd be out of money. So they'd go back to their old shenanigans. Yeah. And here again, they became notable because they became the first prisoners to be incarcerated within the walls that they had built. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I don't think that's a good idea. No. Like, if you were a lifelong criminal, wouldn't you, like, build yourself an escape if you knew you were building a prison? It doesn't sound like they ever tried to escape, that they ever... Like, they tried to get out of it. Like, apparently they'd go to court and be presented with the charges, and they would do the, like, I would... I would never. No. <laughs> Mike, no. <laughs> like, they just went, like, I just... I wasn't there, sir. Th- there's no... No! <laughs> like, you know? yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a perfect angel. But once they were convicted, they'd go off to jail and do the labor and, you know, be back out and be back out soon. And I mean... They never tried to get out. They never tried to escape as far as I could tell. Just nothing. Okay. We're strangely honorable. Right! Like, strangely considerate, strangely honorable. <laughs> like... Uh. So word of the twins and their antics got around. Papers often reported on them because it was always a good time. Sure. Uh, and their story even got picked up by the New York Times. It's on the New York Times online. I'll post it. They've done scans of a lot of old editions. Uh-huh. So I'll post that. That was pretty funny. King Edward VII wanted to meet them. Wanted to meet them. Yeah. <laughs> he and Albert had drinks at the Marquis of Lorne Hotel where he drank beer with the king, which came up a lot at future trials. Yes. <laughs> Apparently he would be like, well, I hope you don't keep me very long because I'm supposed to go hunting with the king later this year. Right, <laughs> right. And they also came to the attention of Sir Edward Henry, who at that time was the head of the Metropolitan Police. <laughs> yeah, I bet actually they came to his attention quite a bit. Well, they did because they kept confounding the police. <laughs> like they they knew that these were the guys that were doing it, but they could never pin it on one of them because they were so identical. You ca- yep. could not tell them. Even people who knew them, their parents could not tell them apart. Right. So this really piqued the interest of Sir Edward Henry, and he decided to apply some new science. Oh. In 1904, it was discovered that everyone's fingerprints are unique, even those of identical twins. Yes. Fingerprints are not an entirely genetic characteristic. Nope. They're formed uh, as the fetus develops, and they can be affected by things like fluctuating hormone levels. All sorts of things go into making fingerprints. Yeah. Yeah. So it is believed that they were one of the first cases to be convicted using fingerprint evidence. (laughs) So great. Yeah. Can you imagine the the one trial they get there and they're like, we have discovered how to tell you apart. Right. We finally. Your games are no. over. So eventually the lives they led of being outdoors and all of the hard labor in jail <laughs> uh, took their tolls on the twin foxes. They both ended up in Chalkdale House Hitchin, which was the poor law union workhouse. 
In 1926, Ebenezer was discovered unconscious in the woods, having run away from the hospital to spend his final hours in his beloved countryside. Aww. He was 68 when he died on October 2nd of 1926. Albert lived to be 79, dying on May 20th, 1937, and they are both buried in the churchyard of St. Nicholas Church in Stevenage, not at the Ebenezer Church. Huh. Yeah. I feel like they should have been buried at the Ebenezer uh, Church. I feel like they should have been, but they were not. They were they were buried at St. Nicholas. Yet another criminal that I'm like, but I like that. Right. Like, I <laughs> wish I'd been there. Right? <laughs> I, I feel like I would have loved to have been part of the town and be like, oh, my God, they're in the paper again, guys. Let's all talk about it. Did ever. you see them in the New York Times? Right. <laughs> Our little town is famous because these crazy brothers. Right. So there is, uh, it closed down a few years ago, but there was a pub named the Twin Foxes. And on Ooh. the hanging side, on one side, it was a representation of the two of them. On the other side, it was a representation of two foxes. foxes right. Um, and that housing estate is still there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still got the uh, The Twin the pillars Foxes the... is a good name for a pub. It is a good name for a pub. That's and apparently cool. you can tell the statues apart by the amount of lichen on them. What, and which one is on the right and which one is on the left? Well, and also their names are carved in them. So lots of ways, really. Lots of ways. Much more so than they were able to do in life. A tattoo would have been a useful thing. It would have been. But I guess you can't give tattoos against people's will. Yeah. It's, but it's funny that they knew about the scars, but maybe they didn't figure out until later who was who or they, you know. Yeah. Or they didn't. I don't know. Or maybe they didn't know. Maybe that was something that came out later. Later, after they were... right. But, yeah. That's so funny. So I was surprised because I really wanted to get more information about, like, how do they use the fingerprints and what kind of crimes they do. This is about it. That's <laughs> this it. Is, yeah, this is really about it. There's they had a... fingerprints. <laughs> Just yeah. like everyone else. Yeah. There's a couple of stories, you know, from the papers of the time talking about, oh, they got mixed up again. <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. That's so funny because they didn't know who was who either. Yeah, when really. It comes down you to could, it, they don't know either. You could argue they never lied. That's true. Because it's, it's conceivable that either of them could have been either of them. Who knows? That is so bizarre. Yep. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I have one short story to finish us off. And Ooh. this is actually going to be kind of a short episode. Wow. But I think that's fine. It's Thanksgiving week. Everyone is tired. Probably. They are full of turkey. And if they're not full of turkey, they will be in two days. Yes. I'm going to read you the headline that caught my eye and was the reason that I chose this story. She looks so delighted right now. You are going to love it. Guys, I don't know if you know how obsessed Diana has been over our last episode, but. Farmer. Is it about an undeclared eggplant? Accused of killing man who ran over his dog blames an eggplant. What? <laughs> Tell me everything. Okay. <laughs> so your story had some more weird, weird pigeon theft in it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Mine has Australia and eggplant. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. What's up? So, We've got listeners in Australia. Right. What's up with eggplants? Why is this a thing? Wait, do we need to translate? What's up with aubergines? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Isn't that French? Um, A lot of the stuff I looked at last week when I was doing the research for the social media, uh -huh. the Australians uh, papers call them, them as aubergine as well. Oh, okay. Uh, British people do. Well, all right, guys, I need to know. So here we go. What happened was there was a farmer in Australia. Uh, his name was Angela, Angelo <laughs> Russo. His name was Angela. Oh, man. Bet that cost him trouble at school and work. All <laughs> over the place. So Angelo Russo... Uh, owned a farm, and I don't know much about his farm, except apparently he grew both eggplants and peppers. Mm. And presumably other things as well. So one day, David Calandro, whose name I very well may be mispronouncing, All good. came over to the farm, and this was one day like last summer, like 2017, so okay. like a year ago, came over to the farm with his two sons, and they went pepper picking, 
or they bought peppers. Anyway, they loaded the, the peppers. A pack of pickled peppers. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 they loaded the peppers into the truck and they were driving away. But when they were driving, and everything was fine, like paid for the peppers, everything's good. When they were driving away, the dog on the Russo farm um, was like, and his name was Harry, by the way. The dog, <laughs> Harry, was, I guess, probably barking at the car, chasing the car. I just think about this girl I used to do horse camp with back in Gloucester. And she had these, some sort of herding dog. I forget what they were. But, like, black and white, and they like to chase shit around. Okay. And when they were out, and you tried to drive, she, her, her driveway was, like, a mile long, back past the barn and past the two houses. And um, these dogs would get in front of your car and run backwards, barking at you the whole time. Oh. And, like, would not move. And I was always terrified, so I drove really slowly. So it would take me 20 minutes to get down her driveway <laughs> because I thought I was going to hit the dogs. And so that's what I imagine is going on here, Mm -hmm. except that Calandro, or whatever his name is, wasn't having any of that shit. (laughs) So he apparently, like, jerked the car at the dogs, or at the dog, to scare it. Okay. So that it would stop chasing his car, only he hit it. And really severely injured it. Yeah. So he drove off with his kids, and... Just left the dog? Left the dog. Jerk. Russo started to call him repeatedly on his cell phone. You need to come back. You you hit my dog, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he ignored him for a little while. And then finally, I guess he felt guilty or whatever. He turned around to come back. I don't know what the plan was right. at that point or why you would. I, I don't even know what you should do if you've already driven off. But um, he came around back to the farm. And when he got there, Russo had just finished putting the dog down mm. by shooting it with a shotgun. Yeah. So, which I get is probably merciful and everything else, but it does mean that when Calandra and his two boys pulled up, he (gasps) was still holding a shotgun. Oh, yeah. So, the story that Russo tells, and the boys were young, so they've been questioned a little bit, but not really accepted as witnesses. Mm -hmm. Um, The story that Russo tells goes that he was walking toward the man's open, toward uh, David Calandra's open window, and... He turned his foot on an eggplant, and he tripped, and that his finger was not even on the trigger, but when the barrel of the gun hit the edge of the window, it fired right into David (gasps) Calandra's face, killing him while he sat in the car with his two kids. Oh. Right? So it turns out that the gun was faulty, like they did some tests on it, and it, it did fire it was very very possible it did fire without him pulling the trigger Mm -hmm. so he didn't mean to shoot the guy however he still was coming at him with a loaded shotgun and obviously upset he had just shot his dog like right it was it was bad news so he ended up being eggplant is the problem the eggplant is the problem of all of the things in the story (laughs) it was a fucking eggplant he tripped on it he ended up being convicted of manslaughter and given five years, mm-hmm. and he had to serve a minimum of two and a half of them, mm-hmm. which has already been appealed because Australia, unlike America, but like Germany, is one of those countries where you can appeal if you're the prosecution and you don't like the way that the outcome. Huh. You don't like the outcome. So... Is it that you don't like the outcome because you think it was too harsh or too lenient or both? I've only ever heard of it happening too lenient and then they appeal. So it's like double jeopardy. Here, yes. Yeah. But it's totally legal other places. Huh. So they are appealing it. They're actually, as I was researching this story, trying to get more details because, oh my God, it's a murder with an eggplant in it. (laughs) Um, Did you go looking for eggplant crime or did you just come upon this? I totally went looking for eggplant (laughs) crime. I was like, God, I don't know what I'm going to do this week. How would a crime involving an eggplant? <laughs> and I found one. I am so excited. Actually, I found more than one. Apparently, smuggling eggplants is like a thing. I don't know. It's Why? pigeons and eggplants. I, you people need to get your priorities straight. <laughs> I mean, eggplant's pretty good, but but weird. Right. And not smuggleable. No. They're big. I just... And I full of water. Think, like, out of all of the things in life, if I never had another eggplant... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I agree. I certainly wouldn't smuggle them into a place that didn't have them. Right. 
And he did have them. So I guess this wasn't smuggling, but yeah. still. When I was researching for this story, I came across a Facebook page called Justice for David Calandro. Oh, here I was thinking it was going to be a collection of eggplant related stories. No, <laughs> sorry, not that exciting. But it is just all documentation about the case and then the appeal and like it it was really interesting cuz I know somebody has very strong feels about this. I get it and it is it is super tragic. Like what a stupid thing to happen with his yeah. kids in the car and everything. Oh, yeah. It's, it was pretty fascinating and that's where I learned that they they are appealing for a stiffer sentence. Interesting. Although even the Facebook group or page or whatever it was is like open about the, yeah, it was not intentional. But right. apparently there was some other stuff that happened afterward that was a little bit like sketchy and cover up y. Mm. Um, they took one of the boys' cell phones away. The Russos did. Mm. And in the end, the police had to get it back from Mrs. Russo Mm -hmm. because she was the one that had it. And I guess they claimed they were using it to call 911. Mm. But it turned out actually a neighbor had called 911. So really, maybe they were just keeping it away from him so that he couldn't call for help or document anything or so that was a little sketchy. Yeah. And and something you can easily tell if a number has been called. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. lie to me if I can easily prove that you're lying to me. Right? So, there you go. Eggplant murder and turkey murder. Yes! <laughs> also, eggplant for Thanksgiving. Thoughts? I honestly don't really know what to do with eggplant other than... Eggplant parmesan? Yeah. Yeah. Which I like I lot. love a lot. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't know that I've ever I've made done chips. anything else with an eggplant. You can make chips out of it, slice it real thin, and dehydrate it. Mm, that would be good. Um, yeah, they're kind of foamy, you know, like. Um, oh, I like, like that. Yeah. All right, then. So I think it is time for shout outs. It's time for shout outs. Crime Crazy is sponsored by Elizabeth Wilder and Dave Hat. Woohoo! Show sponsors support Crime Crazy through Patreon at the $10 per month level or above. Thank you. And a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. If you would like to support Crime Crazy, we would really appreciate that. Yes. Uh, you can check out our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash crimecrazypod or search for Crime Crazy Podcast. All patrons get a monthly shout out on the show and other cool stuff. Yes. <laughs> so go, like, go look. Also, our levels are funny. They are funny. Just go look for fun. Yeah. But also Patreon will allow you to make a one-time donation as well. So if it Ooh. isn't something that you feel like you want another bill added to your month. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, if it's another bill, it could be a dollar. So like, mm. but. <laughs> every, bit of, every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. But also you could just be like, Diana and Aaron are worth five dollars one time here you go there we go we would be thrilled that, we would to be know thrilled. that you care and we'll still give you shout outs that's right if you'd like to receive a shout out please rate and review us on itunes or your podcast catcher of choice we give shout outs for all reviews but we like those five star ones the best we do you can follow crime crazy on facebook we're at facebook.com slash crime crazy pod and from there catch up on the conversation by joining one of the crime crazy discussion groups you can follow us on Twitter at Crime Crazy Pod. You can follow us on Instagram at Crime Crazy Pod. You can visit our website at CrimeCrazyPodcast.com or email us at CrimeCrazyPodcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter. You're at Aaron Pline. I'm at Diana underscore Seacon. I don't check it. Uh, <laughs> Good to know. Gonna be real honest. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram. You're at E Pline. And I'm at Diane underscore Seacon. And I check that constantly. Hey, can I sneak in a shout out? Yeah. So I'm actually going to sneak in to, uh, these are like unofficial reviews, Ooh. but they were on Twitter and they tagged us in them. So I'm glad somebody here is looking at Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just saw this one because it was posted at 6.09 p.m., which was less than 30 minutes ago. I was going to say, it is 6.34 p.m. right yes. now. <laughs> um, and this one is Forgotten News Podcast. Hey. Who says that we are a huge deal in his book. Aww. Isn't that nice? Thanks. The other one came from our friend Kit Karen, who also tagged us. And I don't have it in front of me to see, but it was it was very nice as well. Um, and tagged some some of her favorite podcasts. So Aww, it is so thank nice. Thank you. Thank you, Jim and Kit. You should go listen to Forgotten News and Whispered True Stories. 
Yes. Check them both out. They are fantastic. They are. Thank you, guys. That's lovely. All right. You can continue with your <laughs> spiel. <laughs> or did you reach the end? I reached the end. Ooh, so in that case, Diana, what words of wisdom would you like to leave us with this week? Eggplants are funny, mm-hmm. but they are not responsible for crime. No. no. No, they're really not. But they're really funny. They are they are really funny. And I still, I just have this permanent image right now of an eggplant down somebody's pants. Like, Oh, yeah. It is I, stuck I w- in my head. I will forever think of nothing else. Well, in, so they had the pictures of the pigeons around his ankles. Yeah. Where's the rest of it? Yeah. We know there was, come on. <laughs> well, I have seen pictures of the money belt, but not on him. Right. So, um, and how that was packed. And I've seen pictures of the vitamin bottle. Mm-hmm. With the, the Which was a it. much larger vitamin bottle than I thought it was. Those looked like they were yeah, they decent were, sized eggs. They weren't like egg, like chicken eggs, right. but they were, they were bigger eggs. They yeah. weren't like um, sparrow eggs. Or no, 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 no. They were, yeah. they were a reasonable sized egg. I wonder if they were pigeon eggs. They were unidentified. I, I specifically went looking for that in a bunch of places where like we don't know what kind of eggs they are weird because they just had not i guess i don't know i guess that it probably matters legally what kind of eggs they are yeah um and so they didn't want to just say they were whatever like i suppose maybe they wanted to to like actually make sure yep i also (laughs) like somebody's comment online which was like eggs and live pigeons. Two eggs and like, why not just four eggs? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> Girl <It's> yourself. So <laughs> much easier if you just had four eggs. Oh, <laughs> man. Great. Also, this is not advice. No, it is. You should do this. Go Google undeclared eggplant. Oh, my God. Diana is so excited about this. <laughs> because we're the number one hit. And two and three and four and not five. But six and seven and then eight is the original article who actually coined the phrase undeclared eggplant, which is CNN. <laughs> I'm so proud right now. <laughs> Our logo is the number one Google Images hit for undeclared eggplant. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Followed by a couple things and then one of them is the um, photo of the the birds. Oh my god. I'm just I'm so fucking delighted by this whole thing <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing for us to be like not at all famous for but famous for. i know i just i don't know why that phrase has just struck me as yeah so funny <laughs> it's awesome yep it's awesome yeah call your people call your people double check on them it's the holidays everyone needs an extra call yes and don't end up on next week's episode. Plus stitching together video far harder than stitching together audio because people oh. move and shit. God damn it. Right? Bunch of assholes. Right? Audio, I can make you say anything. I am now concerned about this. <laughs> you should be. Okay. All right. Promise. I'm going to get off voting. Never. I mean, for a week or two. It's Christmas. Hmm. Oh, man. I just admitted that into a microphone, didn't yeah, you I? Did. You oh! did. You said it. <laughs> when I said I can make Diana say anything, I thought I was going to have to, like, edit the sound. But it turns out she it just says it. It is Christmas now. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it is cri- Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> right. <laughs> so at work, we're getting a giant green wreath behind the Ooh. front desk. Oh, so you cool. know the, the logo that's behind the front desk. Yeah. It goes way around that. It even goes and touches both windows. Oh, wow. But it is just greenery. Nothing else on it. <sighs> and I have been explicitly told I am not allowed to put rats in it. So I bought some red felt. <laughs> And I'm going to cut rats out of it. (laughs) Well, I really want the disclaimer to be, no, he's burping. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) You know how often I have to, to edit out 
you asking what the noise is <laughs> that my dog is making. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a super cut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Was that his ass? Ew. Oh, the breath. <laughs> Well, I told no. you the story about the spider and the baby frog, right? The spring peeper. No. When I was on the phone with my dad and I was outside and all of the baby frogs had just become frogs out of tadpoles. And they just that day crawled out of the pond. Like, I think I was watching them all crawl out of the pond at once. <laughs> they were like the size of my fingernail and they were so cute. And I was following one. And it jumped and it got caught in like a cobweb. Mm -hmm. And so I was on the phone with my dad. I don't remember why or what we were talking about. But I was like, oh, I have to get this frog out of the cobweb before, you know, he dies. Like he needs to be able to get back in the water. And I reach my hand down at the same moment. This giant wolf spider comes out and binds him all oh, up. God. And I just started to scream. <laughs> and my dad just started to crack <laughs> up. I bet he had a great time with that. Uh, and he still, <laughs> Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, man. Show sponsors support crime. Ooh, wait, I know something. <gasps> I'm ready. Dave talked to the FBI today. What? Yeah. Why? I would like to say it's because he's up to nefarious shit. Yeah. But it's part of his job. He's doing some security checks for a government agency. <laughs> mm. Still, if you're going to talk to the FBI, like that is that is a perfectly acceptable reason to talk to them that doesn't involve drama well right but no he texted me this morning i get to talk to the fbi and was like oh my god why and he tells me he's like i hope it's scully and i'm like i also hope it's scully <laughs> take pictures um i hope that it is dr spencer reed um and that he wants to come meet me i don't think it was any any of the people we wanted it to be i mean considering that they're all fictional yeah i've i've received no pictures today <laughs> <laughs> Gold sparkly stars on Christmas tree stars. Mm, sparkles. There's glitter all over my head. I know. <laughs> <laughs>